Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your girl, Miss Brown Kelly. Thank you for tuning in. And we're going to get into this uh, review. Sorry, I'm posting so late. If you haven't done so by now, I ask that you to hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell so you know next time I upload a video. We're going to talk about these basketball wives. So, this season, since they missed the season... Well, they took off, I should say. This season, they are starting up with the pandemic in, here in California. And I've got a few notes wrote down because a few things I want to touch on. So, we start off with uh, them doing a little recap of what's been going on over the United States, over the world, the protesting, the killings, and all that um, Black Lives Matter type of uh, movement in their first little intro and then we we get into Shawnee um, speaking on it and uh, letting us know we're they're doing this during the pandemic so she starts off with um, uh, I guess she's at the airport and, and with her children and you know her daughter Mimi and her son Sharif are both going to LSU you know, that's Shaq's old um, mater. So, I know he's happy. Uh, so, she's going to be going there playing. They're both going there playing basketball. Wonderful thing for the children. Um, moving on to... They show a little clip of everybody with... Well, they show Jackie playing uh, basketball with um, her son and that he's gone to college and what's going on that this is be year 25 for her and her husband uh malaysia is still living in atlanta so i guess she's in california just to do the show and of course the kids broke the toilet uh stopped the toilet up like kids do uh then we get to we get to evelyn evelyn takes us down the path of what she's been doing lately so Evelyn states that she got baptized, that she's changed, and and um, she's working with uh, charities and those type of things to help better herself. Uh, we see her in her home. I may be skipping around with these scenes. We see her in her home. Phoebe comes by. They're talking. Phoebe's complimenting the house. That she's changed the condo. Um, and she lets Phoebe know that she plans on selling it. That she does not feel safe living in this environment anymore. Because of the whole situation that happens during season 8. With her and OG. Um, if you're not familiar... She goes into the whole Instagram post where uh, she posted the gorilla gif, gif, whatever. Um, she said it was the laughing gif. I'm not sure. And on G her and OG have been going back and forth on Instagram previously. Prior to this post, OG makes a post saying, you know, you're racist. You, post you said this about... Jackie, you said this about CC, you saying this about me, and things just escalate from there. So now she's saying that people have been DMing her, she hasn't felt safe in her home because of this whole situation to the point that she felt that she needed to sue OG because she was going to let OG affect her livelihood because she wanted attention. I don't know why she felt that that was OG wanting attention. If you felt like you're being personally attacked on social media, you would respond to it. Evelyn says she did not uh, have anyone in mind when she did the post. But this is the thing about Evelyn. All you had to do was state that. On Instagram she she did take it down after a while but has she just said you know oh, gee I'm sorry you felt that way this was not intended for you that would have squashed all of this 
Instead, she gets emotional. She's playing the victim now. And she's crying. And Phoebe asked her, why are you crying? And, and I was wondering that too. Like, why are you crying? Uh, you want people to feel sorry for you because now you are receiving all these death threats. I do not agree with people uh, making death threats over a post. That's crazy. Um, but I feel like had she been held accountable, it would have never got to that point. Had she had just said, hey, this was taken the wrong way, apologized, took it down, people wouldn't have been so outraged. But yet she instead continued to justify what she did and angered so many people. Not everybody is rational and not everybody's going to think the same. So we have the situation um, where they have not been to court yet. Uh, but I guess this is what um, led up to the court. So I'm going to say. So Phoebe is like the feeble, weak-minded little girl. I, I can't even say you're a grown woman. You can't cut a vegetable. Come on. That's just ridiculous. Um, she said, she asked her, did she want some avocado toast? And Phoebe's like, I don't know how to cut an avocado. Really? I I'm confused on how people are parents and have children. You, you know, you have children, but you, you don't know how to cook. So what do you feed your kids all day? Fast food? Like, I'm confused. What, what do your children eat? Moving along... Um, it takes us to Shawnee, um, at during that last year, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant had passed and, um, his daughter and the other people on the, on the airplane, uh, I'm sorry, on the helicopter. So Sharif has decided that he's going to get a tattoo of Kobe on him and they're at the tattoo parlor um, getting this this tattoo in remembrance of Kobe Bryant and we're gonna have um, Jackie meets up with OG and they discuss they discuss you know what things is going on in um, you know, G lets us know she's still with Kwame and, um, they're still happy. And Jackie asked her about her and Evelyn, that situation, could they resolve it? And she's like, well, you know, this is a legal matter now. We're going to court. So, you know, there's nothing really to talk about. And I don't blame OG. Like you, you taking me to court. So we, we can't discuss this now. So she asked her, do she, can, um, would she like to speak to Shani? So she says, okay, fine. You know, we never really had no serious problems. But this is this is the whole thing about it. If, if you feel like someone is stating something negative, even about your friend, much likely your co-worker, your employee, since you are one of the executive producers, these are all your employees, stating, I feel like this person is... Uh, treating me different because the color of my skin and you don't see a problem with it you don't acknowledge it instead you keep saying no this is not an issue uh i don't understand why she, she, og says no she doesn't have a problem with shawnee i would have a problem with shawnee but she doesn't so Um, Jackie brings up Malaysia and how she would love to be friends with her again and, and reckless out of friendship and everything. Now, Jackie and, um, Evelyn have a conversation. They meet up and they have a conversation. And, um, she also tells Evelyn this, that, you know, she would love to reconcile. Evelyn meets up with Malaysia and they discuss Jackie and, uh, Malaysia just says she'll pray about it. She never... She said maybe one day. And 
Evelyn invites uh, Malaysia out to dinner somewhere. It looked like they were having dinner, little hors d'oeuvres or um, drinks, whatever. And Jackie shows up. She clearly was blindsided and did not know Jackie was coming. And that's the problem with I have with these ladies. You know, you just told us in your opening scene that you just went and got baptized and, and you're trying to change yourself. But you're still doing sneaky stuff. You set this woman up. You know that she did not want to meet with her. And I say you, she knew that she did not want to meet with her because if you, why didn't you tell her? Why didn't you tell her that she was coming? Because you knew she didn't want to meet with her. You knew she wasn't ready. And you, you guys force friendships that people are not ready to have. Uh, Jackie comes in. She sits down. Malaysia felt like you should have bowed down to me. You ain't showing no remorse. You ain't showing nothing. I'm out. So she gets up and leaves. So Jackie's upset because Jackie feel like, well, you you still haven't let me explain my side of the story. And I didn't get a chance to talk. So nothing was resolved during that scene, which, you know, it's the first scene. This is the first um, episode. So, um... Shawnee did introduce us to Liza, who is Lamar Odom's um, ex. Um, I, don't, I don't know if they were ever married, but she does have two uh, teenage children by him now. And Liza seems like a good person. I don't know how well she's going to fit in on the show because usually people who are good part of people don't last but one season. Um... She seems like she's a very straightforward person. Uh, she was being very candid about uh, how she felt about Lamar Odom uh, behavior and how it is affecting the children since everything's in social media and how she's, you know, she's tired of having to pick up the pieces for him. Which is understandable. Any Anyone in that position would be. But my only concern is that she said herself that he has mental issues and drug issues. So, until those issues are resolved and he gets the proper hair, uh, help he needs, she's going to keep dealing with that until... The children are old enough to say, you know, we're, we're just not going to let this bother us anymore. But I'm here for Liza. I think that um she, she seems like a sweet person. But we'll see because, you know, a lot of people start off that way. Uh, Malaysia, Evelyn, and Phoebe do this little cooking thing because Phoebe don't know how to cook. So... I thought that was boring. Uh, Phoebe also tells us that she has a new man. She's dating this retired uh, football player. Um, that she didn't sign with the, the record company she was, was interested in. So, I thought that was like, okay. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know. Sometimes it seemed like all these ladies' world revolve around a man. Like, everything's about a man. Like, you don't have nothing else going on. So I don't know. Hopefully, we'll see more. Phoebe's not really... I'm not really a fan of her. She seems like she's just um, Evelyn's little kiss-up. And, and I'm not too much a fan of that. Shawnee meets up with Jack... Uh, yeah, I already um, said that stuff. But this is the thing I wanted to say about Shawnee. I think she was full of shit. I think she had no intentions on meeting up with OG. Um... She does lie a lot, if you notice. She said she would meet up with her if time allowed. If, and she would not say, you know, this is, I think she said what she was told to say, in my opinion. And I say that because, you know, she said if there's, if not confrontational. Your best friend is the most confrontational person on the show. Evelyn has had so many interactions with so many different women on the west and the east coast on both coasts 
So you took another little jab. You still tried to throw shade on her. Even when you were saying, hey, this person, I could see this, you know, sure, I'll meet up. You wanted to say the thing that was politi politically correct, but you still had to take that little jab at her. So, you know, you're just full of shit, in my, my opinion. But she never does meet up with OG because, you know, now the pandemic's hit. Now she's just ready to move to Houston. But we all know, like I said, how trifling she is because... The rumor mills have it, the streets, word on the curb, however you want to put it, that I guess that's one of the reasons why her and Tammy fell out was because Tammy Roman brought the show idea of Basketball Wise Dallas to her. And then she goes with Basketball Wise Houston instead. Of course, you don't want to give Tammy no credit. Of course, you don't want her to give her no clout on that. Because y'all always thought Tammy was y'all little bottom of the barrel chick. Y'all always picked on her, made fun of her. Um, she supposedly was your friend, but you ha ha kick it up anytime somebody had took a shot at her. So, friends like that, who needs them? Like, I don't even know why um, half the ladies even came back on the show. I guess they're under contract. I know OG had posted something on her social media saying. She was on the contract. That's the only reason why she came back. She tried not to come back. She did not want to come back. We see um, OG is uh, building her own, Aaron Kwame building a home. And they were out furniture shopping for beds for them. And pretty much, that was about the gist of the thing. I said, Jackie's still up to the fuckery too. You knew you were setting Malaysia up. That's why she don't want to fuck with you. You still being a sneaky ass bitch. It's like these women have not learned the fact y'all don't know how to be friends because y'all so much being a bitch all the goddamn time. I never seen a bunch of old ass women who just love to sit up and be straight bitches. And then you knew you came in there and you didn't even speak to her. You didn't even acknowledge her. You just spoke to Evelyn because you wanted Malaysia to kiss your ass. You didn't say it, but it was obvious that was the that was the whole um persona you put out there and that's why malaysia got her butt up and left like no i'm not doing this with you so i think uh this was the fakest episode of the season we have saw uh i'm glad malaysia's finally standing up to jackie because I, I remember the time she went with jackie when she went and got her colonist cleansed like and you went and started talking, spreading rumors about this girl not being no good mama. No, she don't want to be your friend. So we're going to see if they squash this beef for, the, for a check. You know, it's all about a check. So we're going to see how this play out. Uh, these ladies are still with the foolishness. Y'all couldn't even start the first episode without it. They tried, but halfway through, the true colors came right back. Uh... Evelyn killed me when she's, she's crying in the kitchen. Show absolutely no remorse for nothing she's done. You assaulted the woman the whole show over Chad. And congratulations to Chad. I see he's engaged. And I'm going to end this video here. If you liked it, subscribe. Leave a comment. Say what you liked about it. If you didn't like it, say what you didn't like about it. And until the next one, peace.